Hey there. It's time for some roleplay. Let's get to it. Hey, what's up? We moved the mic and I also forgot to take off my headset. Hey, what up? It's me from the future wearing a different shirt with different lights in a different time. I just wanted to drop in from the future and remind you that there is a Twitter thing going on where if you tweet the hashtag Zealand SOS and explain to me why I should save your save, I'm going to make a video that comes out on April 11th where I save four or five of your saves. I open up the file, I go through and decide what changes you might need to make in order to do better in that save. So if you hashtag Zealand SOS, I'm going to slide into your DMs and ask you for that save file, have a peek around. That sound like something you want to do? Then you hashtag Zealand SOS and I'll search it and yeah. It's going to be a fun competition. I'm looking forward to getting into a couple of save files and teaching uh, people how to get themselves out of bad situations since that is basically all I do anyways. Hashtag Zealand SOS. And you might not have gotten the best head start on the competition. That doesn't mean you still can't get in it because I haven't filmed this video yet. But I've been talking about that competition for a week already on my Twitch. So if you watch the Twitch stream, you'll get cool information like this in advance. The link is down below. And I promise, even if you don't know what Twitch is, it's very easy to figure out. You click on the link, you follow me, and you get pinged when I am there talking live to you. But enough of that competition tomfoolery. We're here to talk about roles. Player roles are butchered in explanation all the time, and I get asked about them in chat a lot on Twitch, and I really don't know how to answer it in short form. In case you notice, I like to talk, but I promise you I've whittled this script down. Or have I? I really actually have cut it down a lot, and we're going to talk about what roles are. I'm going to go through how important it is for a player to know the role that they're playing. Spoiler, actually depends on a couple of interesting factors. How much do roles really change movement? How significantly can they clash? So basically, how much do you need to know what you're doing with the roles? And how bad can you make your team possibly with bad roles? And then I'm going to talk about how I think about roles when I'm putting a tactic together. Sounds fun? Sounds like everything you need to know? Well then congratulations, you've come to the right place. I already said this, my name is Zealand and let's dive in. Literally. I've retreated to my corner so that we can look at a tactic and show you what all the roles are. And oh, is that me leading the league by six points? I didn't even notice. Here's a tactic I'm using on stream right now. It's your classic Connoisseurs 442. We have the attacking coming from the wings. The midfield kind of bowed. We're going to be using a lot of hand illustrations. Bowed. And the back line is kind of bowed as well. So what are roles? Roles are what allow you to recreate real life tactics in the game. Not everybody that can play striker does the exact same thing. As the game has evolved over the years, you have less and less of the same type of player playing the same position. And as a result, when you have strikers, you can have someone like Erling Holland, who is very comfortable pushing against the back line, trying to make runs the entire time. And you can have someone like Anthony. Now I've switched his name to Mark Anthony, where he's not actually the best goal scorer in the world, but he is somebody that's comfortable playing at the top position. He just needs to drop in a little more. This wall of different roles reflects that. If I'm, if I'm Erling Holland, his best role recommended by the game is advanced forward. While for Mark Antony, who has a different set of skills as we've seen, you know, advanced forward's not something that he's necessarily going to be as good at. He's more suited to a false nine. It's worth noting that each player role comes with a set of personal instructions that you might have seen when I was hovering over it earlier. If you're a false nine, you take more risks and you dribble with the ball more. If you're a complete forward, you're going all over the place. Takes more risks, dribbles more, gets further forward, roams, moves into channels, the whole nine yards. You should keep these in mind when you are deciding what role a person should be playing. If that's not enough information for you about a role does, because not every section of roles is going to be as obvious. Like, for example, what does a Trequartista do? Well, you might not have any idea. You can click a drop-down arrow 
that will explain in significant detail what a Trequartista does if it's something that you're not familiar with. So you can always look at this description for more information, but I'm now going to jump into running through every role that is available quickly and breezing over what that role is going to do for you. For the strikers, I like to break the roles into two parts. You have your goal scoring roles and then you have your supporting roles. It doesn't mean the supporting roles aren't going to score a pile of goals. They probably will anyways, but they're not hunting for those goals exactly all the time. Your goal scoring roles are going to be advanced forward. Now, these are people that are they're pushing the line, essentially. Then you have poachers who are they, they don't try and get involved on the ball as much, but they're still going. Then there's the people that could be both. You have target men who could be attacking target men like Mitrovic. You just plant them on the penalty spot and there he goes. You have your complete forwards, which if you put them on attack, it's what basically all the best forwards in the game are because they have the ability to do whatever they want. Then pressing forwards. This is somebody like Raheem Sterling. You're just running all the time. They're able to wreak havoc, and they also are very capable of scoring a lot of goals. It's honestly one of my favorite roles. Your supporting forwards are going to be deep-lying forwards, target men on support, complete forwards on support, Trequartistas floating around looking for space, kind of like a Kaká-style player, and then false nines, which is what I have on Mark Antony. And in order to complement, you're probably going to want a supporting forward next to an offensive forward. That just creates this connection up through. But don't let me get distracted. Just kidding, I'm going to get distracted. Let me show you something. If you're not sure if a player is suited to a particular role, even though you should be following uh, the game's recommendation, if you click on the role, it highlights what they're supposed to be using. Apply this contextually, right? So complete forward is going to be using all these attributes and advanced forward is going to be using this. If you have a particular play style, then you probably you're going to need to add a few attributes into this and attributes like determination are always important. Every attribute is always important, but these are the attributes that you need to be a successful advance forward. Holland has them. That sort of stuff just really helps when you're considering what role a player should be playing in. Look at the personal instructions, look at what attributes are highlighted, make a decision. Let's just drag Mark down to an attacking midfield spot. You have attacking midfielder. Uh, this is essentially just a central midfield style player that is going to be looking to attack. They can still help out pretty much defensively as a bit of a front line defense, and they are going to look to be proactive when they're on the ball. They're going to look to move. They're going to look to score sometimes when they're on it. Advanced playmakers are orchestrators. They're not somebody that's going to be scoring as many goals. You can play a Trek Wartista down here too. Then you have an Enganch. This is somebody that I very rarely use, but it's kind of a cool position. One of the wonder kids this year, Diogo Nascimento, is a natural Enganch, which is hilarious. And I'm probably not saying it right. This person's basically a turnstile. You know those unathletic people that are still really good playing as an attacking midfielder that stand there, take the ball in, then turn around and pass it to somebody else brilliantly. That's kind of this person. Shadow Striker is the type of striker you want running off. If you have a solitary target man, you have a Shadow Striker running off him. He can be the primary goal scorer in your team. They're looking to get on the ball and be dangerous and be a significant goal threat from the attacking midfield spot. Pretty useless defensively, though. A drag mark out to the wing now. You have your winger. This is your classic just up and down athleticism based. Somebody that can beat people and get the ball into the box, create some havoc. Advanced playmakers can actually step out here too. It's an interesting experiment playing with advanced playmakers in the outside. Inside forward, you just think Ari and Robin. These are people that are cutting in, looking to get themselves involved in this area. And you can tell that because when I put this guy on inside forward, the colors change. It's a cool little feature. Uh, we're going to get more into it later. Trek Wartistas can also play on the outside, drifting around. I've actually, I don't think I've ever used that. And wide target men will also drift around looking to receive the ball. Rom Deuters, this is the Thomas Müller special. These are guys that somehow are good, even though they're not good. You know what I mean? Generally very intelligent and well-balanced players. Then you have inverted wingers. These are new this year. They will look to cut into say this area and cross the ball with their inside foot instead of their outside foot, but they're not inside forwards. They're not necessarily driving to shoot every time. They're just looking to cut in and make a play. When we step back to our wingers across the midfield. You're going to end up with a lot of similar traits. Wide midfielder is essentially going to be able to do the same things as a central midfielder. They're not going to look to get as far forward as a winger, which is a pretty offensive type of position. Wide playmakers are the advanced playmakers that just aren't as advanced, and you can still invert wingers from here and play with a defensive winger if you're looking for a really defensive formation. In the middle of the park, this is where things 
spice up. We've got a lot of options for midfielders, and it's kind of the same as strikers. If you only have two midfielders and there's no holding midfielder behind them, then you're going to want to try and balance out where I have a center mid and a box to box. A box to box is someone that's going to get back a little more defensively and be a little later arriving offensively, where the center mid is going to be exactly in the middle of the park, doing all the things the center mid's supposed to do. You can have a deep lying playmaker. Now, this is the and opposite of an advanced playmaker. Instead of trying to get the ball up the field, they will sit back and attempt to orchestrate from what I would call a point guard position, if you know basketball. You have your box to box and your advanced. You also have a ball winner. Now you start to see the defensive mid roles that can step farther forward. This is somebody that's looking to tackle off possession. It's a fabulous role if you're looking, if you've got somebody that's good at tackling and has high work rate, take advantage. And if you've got everything covered, you can throw in a roaming playmaker. Metzala is just the greatest role in the game. I talk about that on stream all the time. And Carolero is a bit of a wide defensive midfielder position. It's a bizarre position that has some success. All right, Florentino, we're going backwards. We're doing this at warp speed. Your defensive midfielders is the same as a center mid position. This is your classic understanding of the role. You can also deep lying playmaker out of here. Ball winning midfielder, the anchor man, which is the person that anchors themselves right in front of your line, your back line, that is, and makes plays. You have your halfback, which I always think is Jordan Sh not Shakiri. Come on. Granite Xhaka. They actually look to get behind your defense when you're in possession to orchestrate from really the very back and make things happen. But you also have some offensive people coming from a defensive mid formation. I mean, I have a defensive mid heavy formation here and I use something called a segundo volante. That in a regista, these people are looking to take risks to get forward and to get into positions to make plays. It's like the difference between an attacking midfielder and an advanced playmaker between the two. And again, if you feel sound, there's your roaming playmaker, which I've honestly not had a lot of success with. Fullbacks are fairly straightforward. You have your fullback role, which is going to be your comfortable, normal position. No nonsense means they're just going to try and stay back at all times and get involved in the possession as little as possible. There's center back out wide, basically. Wingbacks are going to look to move. Complete wingbacks are really going to look to move. A lot of your world-class wingbacks. Uh, Alexander Arnold is a complete wingback. Dude's just sailing up the field. He might as well be a winger. And then inverted wingbacks are people that are looking to underlap, to kind of get into this space. So if I turn the inverted wing back on, you see that color change to slightly less intimidating red. In the center of the park, you are offered ball playing, central, and no nonsense. No nonsense, you don't want the ball. Ball playing, they do want the ball. They kind of look to make passes and what have you, and then central defenders are somewhere in the middle. There's a couple of interesting you know, role tweaks here, and you can see how, one, you're holding position on defend, but stopper and cover. Stopper. Cover. Stopper. Cover. I don't mess with it unless I've only got one defensive mid, which in my formation, I don't. But if you have one defensive mid, you probably want one on stopper and one on cover. And don't worry, I'm going to talk about the rest of these things later. I trust you'll be able to figure out what a sweeper keeper and a goalkeeper are, so we'll just be moving on for the sake of time. Those are all of the roles that are in the game. Now, this is something that is added and changed every year, so if you're watching this a year or two in the future, it could very well be different. Just look up a guide to include that one or two roles that you're not familiar with that aren't in this video. Now, moving on to the next question is, how important is it for the players to actually be completely comfortable in not only the position, but the role, and when I'm talking about the position, I mean the spot on the field, and I'm talking about the role, what they're doing in that spot on the field. Now, it is not very important most of the time. If a player is uncomfortable in a position, so when you look at that map next to the player, and you see all those different colored circles, if it's bright green, that player is going to play that position perfectly. They will know where to be, they will make the right decisions on where to go, and they will cover all their P's and Q's when they get there. If it is non-existent, there is no circle in that spot. You put them in that spot, you see one silver star, they're not going to know where to go at all. It's important to emphasize the fact that this does not make them a worse player. So there are some positions where putting a player there and all they do is run around like a chicken with their head cut off, that's not a bad thing. Because that's what you want them to do in the first place. Like sometimes I'll just stick somebody up on the wing, e even though they're a striker, and I just want them on the field. They've got talent. I want them out there running around somewhere and it doesn't matter. But your center back should probably know where in all heck they're supposed to be. 
So you want them to know what they're doing. If you're asking them to do a certain role, they're not familiar with it. That just means that their attributes aren't distributed in a way that's allowing them to play that role perfectly. It's kind of like something that's shooting off a little bit of a warning, like, well, this guy's not actually the best ball playing defender in the world, but he's not going to end up woefully out of position because he doesn't really know how to be a ball playing defender. He would end up woefully out of position if he doesn't know how to play central defense. Not knowing how to play a position can affect you in certain situations. Not having the attributes distributed to make them particularly good at a certain role will not change your life in any way. That player is going to be on the field using all of their attributes no matter what. While we're on that topic, the next thing I wanted to talk about was how much do roles actually change movement. You put someone at fullback, how much difference is it going to be if they're a no-nonsense fullback compared to a complete wingback? My answer to how much they change movement is it can be completely life-changing. Also, my hair is shambolic today. Anyways, the most obvious example of this I can give at the fullback position. Now this is, you have your no-nonsense, that person's going to look to stay back and you see that this area is covered completely green. Well, what happens if I go complete wing back on attack? All of a sudden, they're not even here anymore. You know, they're all the way up here covering these areas brilliantly. If we go back to no-nonsense, you see all of these areas all the way to the touchline on the far side are going to be less covered by my team, and there's a winger in front of them. So roles in positions, they make all the difference in the world. The world. And what can you do with the information that you've just acquired? You got all these roles, you don't necessarily know what to do with them. You want to visualize how they're going to play out. Because as I was hinting at earlier, roles can clash. I did it on stream today. I put an inverted winger on the same side as an inverted wingback. I wanted to see how it worked. I never had done it before. And it it didn't work. We had no pressure on the wing at all. And we all ended up kind of in the same place doing absolutely nothing. I do enjoy experimenting with roles from time to time, but I was told by a wise sage with a beard once. And this wise sage is Viking Dan, actually. He told me that the formation that you see when you set up a formation is your formation in defense. And the formation you see when you're on offense is completely determined by the roles you have. Now, I don't necessarily think that's completely true, but it's pretty accurate and always helps me think about where are people going to end up when I have the ball. This is all an incredibly smooth transition to how I think about roles. You got a five head. You have to show it off. And that Viking Dan quote, his bearded sage wisdom, is what informs my theory about roles. And that's, there are two things. One, where is the player when the possession changes? If they're a complete wing back on attack, they're in Narnia in the stands behind the goal. If they're no nonsense, they're back at the midfield line. When we lose the ball, now where do they react to? That's the second one. Both are going to react to the same spot. It's going to take the complete wing back on attack a lot longer to get back. So what is the difference between this and the other formation? Well, these players are not going to get back nearly as much nope. as... Come on. <laughs> nearly as much as these players because they're getting back to here now how can you switch this because you really want to have the ability to react quickly and have these guys up here creating an automatic connection that they don't have to run to so that when we win possession they're a little farther up the field if you put these players on attack you will notice that at a certain point they will just stop getting back if you put them on support they'll get back farther their reaction will go farther back. They're going to start farther up the field, but they're going to bring it back. Mark Antony is a false nine on support. He's going to bring it back a lot more. And when we get the ball, he's not going to be pushing against the back line, but Holland is. And what you want to try and create is I put this beautiful, beautiful 4-4-2 back together. Hey, it won us the league last year. What I'm trying to create is a team that will create a numerical advantage on defense once it's reacted 
and a team that will create a numerical advantage on offense once it has reacted. Once it has recovered or pushed into the spot that it wants to be in. And the decision that you have to make is where are these players supposed to be reacting from? If you're struggling to break people down, just putting your entire midfield on a 4-4-2 into attacking might not get the job done. You need to have more immediate pressure. Move the wingers up. Move a midfielder up. Do something. Create a diamond in the midfield because you want them to be reacting offensively and defensively from a more advanced position. And if you put them on attack, they are going to stay... It just shifts them farther forward. If you put them on defend as a wingback, they're going to be more inclined to stay back more of the time. Defend on a wingback is still going to get forward a lot more than a no-nonsense fullback. When you're matching up a tactic, pick your roles based off the numbers game. How many numbers are we going to get forward once we've reacted? How many numbers will we get there defensively once we have reacted? And how many people there before the reacting starts? Got it? It might seem high-minded, but it's something that you can get very comfortable with. I would recommend using the sideline camera view while you're playing, because then you can really actually see the entire field and tactically where people are getting back to when they stop getting back, the attacking winger, for example, and where people are getting forward to and where they really just stop getting forward. And if you want them to keep going forward or want them to keep coming back, tell them to do so. Switch them to support. Move them down the field and put them on attack. Whatever you need to do. And roles are the connection between the two. I'm going to make a much more detailed tactics video later, so I'm not going any further down this rabbit hole. Roles are the reaction. Everything that happens once you leave your starting point is a reaction determined by the role you've picked that player to play. The relationship between two roles in central midfield up top makes sense in your head, and it should make sense in the game. Just please, for the love of all that's good and holy, do not put two poachers next to each other please i'm begging you you better have one heck of a midfield that's what you're doing you better have one heck of a midfield where's my screwdriver i think i lost my screwdriver i think that means we're supposed to end the video i hope this helped uh, my explanation of roles and how you're supposed to think about them and how you're supposed to use them Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on stream, on Twitter, on Instagram, in the comments. A lot of places. Deity. Look at this. Makes the save. <laughs> Not only that, he parries it out brilliantly.